Hello, my diamonds. It's me, Sheila True Love, yet again with, I forgot to say his name, is Jason Motivation. And I was uh, scrolling on the bus and I ran into his content. And, you know, this is always for critical review, educational purposes, and I want your reaction. In terms of him sharing his viewpoint, uh, he's a married man and his wife, as far as I'm concerned, She's a very, very lucky lady. Very lucky. Oh, yeah. Now, he's talking here about women. They need to stop coddling men. Now, I have a video here on my channel. It's with a 16-year-old son who's out of control. And the way he's raising up on his mother, honey, <laughs> if his father, he would never have that kind of behavior. If that where is that? But let me share this video here with you. Because again, let me put some light on here. Hold on. I got this little light thing. I purchased it. My, my friend told me to get it. Well, she I'm going to get her this for her birthday because that's what she wants. So I got this one and I got another one. But I'm going to get her this for her birthday because that's what she wants. And I'm going to surprise her with something else because I love her and she deserves it. So anyway, let me share this clip with you. Women need to stop coddling men. They really do. I guess my last couple of posts here on TikTok upset quite a few men. And it also upset some women that was caping to protect men from accountability. For those ladies that cape and coddle and baby men from accountability... This is why we have so many sorry men today. Mm -hmm. This is why. Women like you, they're able to hide behind and dodge accountability because you put the pacifier in their mouth. You give them the baby bottle. You give them, you, you breastfeed them. You nurture them away from accountability. And that's why some of these men grew up in these homes and they wasn't able to get discipline. Whenever a man wanted to discipline them or their daddy wanted to discipline them, they, you got in the way, Hello. Florida Evans. No, James, no. Don't do it to him, James. Yeah, that was you. That's why we have so many sorry, dusty men. We have these sorry, dusty, ashy face. That's what I call it. Ashy face, dusty men. This is the author of confusion. The enemy, Satan, wants the, the uh, confusion to continue. He enjoys this gender war. I talk to men. I don't fight to get in the middle of women's business. Yeah, I know women have their issues, but I let women talk to women. Thank you. I, I talk to men because I'm a man. So if you can't handle a man being held accountable, <laughs> sorry men are going to constantly be in rotation. That's right. I guess my last couple of posts here on TikTok. I love the way he gets on women's case and he get on men's cases. He's not trying to pander towards women. He lets you both know the areas that you need to be working on. And he's absolutely right. You have a lot of women who they put up with a lot of crap from these men, things that they should never put up with. Whether it's your son or it's your husband or your spouse, your partner, whatever you want to call him. Like I always say, anytime a woman, she stays with an abusive man, whether he's abusing her mentally, emotionally, financially, or even sometimes physically, and you continue to stay with that man, that's coddling him. That's not making him take accountability, because as far as I'm concerned, and as I'm making observations, you, he's one of the 3%. I say there's 3% of good men out here, 97% of them. <laughs> good luck. But his wife is very fortunate to have someone who seems to have common sense, very wise, has a sound mind too. A lady has no problem listening to what he's saying. You know, and, and I really appreciated the point when he said, I don't really get into women's business because I'm talking to the men because I'm a man. And I've always felt that way when it comes to these pastors and deacons and priests in the church. You have no business going in the back room talking to some woman, talking about I need to talk to the pastor. He has the first lady, it's his wife. Let the women handle the women issues 
and let the men handle the men issues. That goes for all of these religious organizations, elders, governing bodies, uh, 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 ministerial servants, pr priests. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. You don't need to be handling no women. We have more than enough women who could take care of women issues. That's why every time you look up, you see another pastor or a religious leader man caught with his pants down because he was so busy. Uh-uh, no. Let the women handle the women. And like he said, he handles the men. I find this man to be so refreshing. I am a part of the 4B movement and I'm not interested in marriage, but I do like to find peep men who are good for activity buddies, companionship. You have to be careful who you surround yourself with and who you allow in your circle. His type, I would definitely have him in my circle. Absolutely. But he's married, so I would definitely, his wife would always have to, I bet his wife is awesome. I bet he got a Proverbs 31 type of woman, honey. And you know, I did research on the Proverbs 31 type of wife. What kind of husband did she have? She probably had a husband like this. So let me tell you the research I found on what the Proverbs 31 husband must have been like. You know how I do my research. It says that the Proverbs 31 husband is an exemplary biblical role model. He was supportive. He encourages and supports his wife's endeavors. If you notice in Proverbs 31, verse 28 through 29, he was very respectful. His values, he valued his wife's wisdom. He valued his wife's opinions, verse 26. He was trustworthy. He manages the household finances wisely. And you know his wife wasn't no stay-at-home wife, honey. She was a working woman. She was out in the marketplace. She had her own business. She was an entrepreneur, that Proverbs 31 type of woman. He was this is what you can't find these days. He was faithful. He commits to his marriage and his family, Proverbs chapter 31, verse 10 and 11. He was hardworking. He provides for his family, 14 and 15. He, made, he makes informed and very wise decisions like this gentleman here. Spiritual, he feared God and he follows God's commands. When it came to leadership roles, he supplies his family's need. He was a protector. He safeguarded his family. And when it comes to wisdom, he offered great direction. And he always collaborates everything with his wife because it's a partnership. There was a mutual respect. He valued her input. He was an excellent listener, a good communicator. And he worked together to help manage the household. Hello. Look at verse 16 through 18. She had an amazing husband. How can she not be like one of the best wives? Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 through 33, it shows what a husband's role is. Let's listen to what God and Christ have to say in terms of how a man is supposed to behave. 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 3. 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. So with this Proverbs 31 type of husband, she had a great husband. How can she not be a great wife? And I'm sure he definitely knew Ephesians chapter 5 verse 21, where it was a time for us to submit to one another. Hello. Can we talk Joan Rivers? So he took, he had great characteristics. He knew how to control his behavior. He didn't eat any bread of laziness. He wasn't dishonest. He, he was always a spiritual leader. He guided the family spiritually. That's just to name a few things about this Proverbs 31 husband and his qualities. But like I said, this gentleman here, Jason, Jason Motivation, admirable. And he's reminding me so far of a Proverbs 31 type of husband and a woman could only be pray that she could end up with someone like him. Twinkle, twinkle, twinkle.